Today we're going to be talking about salbutamol or albuterol's mechanism of action and its classifications. Uh, make sure that you hit that subscribe button before we get into this video so you don't forget. But I'm excited about this medication. It's a common medication to be used in paramedicine and we're going to teach it to you and get deep in that so you understand why this medication works for these respiratory patients. Let's get into it. Albuterol is just another way of saying uh, albuterol. It's simply the, there's a few different types of names to it. Ventolin would be another name for this particular drug. So lots of different names this will be under. However, the mechanism of it working is going to be identical. Okay. And so the way this medication works is actually going to act on the adrenergic. Okay. Adrenergic receptors. Okay. Okay receptors and these adrenergic receptors are going to be you probably have heard them before but the common ones are going to be alpha 1 beta 1 and beta 2 okay those are your adrenergic receptors now as far as these adrenergic receptors uh, we have a few different responses alpha 1 being vasoconstriction uh, beta 1 being more cardiac contraction and dromotropy and chronotropy or the rate and then we have beta 2 now beta 2 is what we're going to focus on today okay so beta 2 is what salbutamol and albuterol are going to affect now with this medication it is used for someone that has bronchoconstriction whether it's through COPD or asthma something along those lines that's causing bronchoconstriction and irritation within the bronchioles themselves and so as you can see here we have that pathology within this picture and so what beta 2 is going to do what salbutamol is going to do is going to stimulate beta 2 and what beta 2 is going to cause is bronchodilation. Okay, bronchodilation. Okay, and what bronchodilation is simply going to do is going to take this very constricted and very irritated bronchial that's causing a lot of that wheezing and shortness of breath within our respiratory patients, and it's going to dilate them. Okay, it's going to dilate them, allowing for better airflow into the alveoli so that way we can transfer and diffuse oxygen. So that is the quick and dirty understanding of salbutamol's mechanism of action. Now, when it comes to this medication, again, it is a bronchodilator. It's a sympathomimetic, which means it's going to... Um, it's going to affect the sympathetic nervous system, but primarily targeting the beta 2, okay? And so that's the big piece that we need to be focusing on. This medication is selective to beta 2. And the indications for them is bronchoconstriction due to wheezes from shortness of breath, so often asthma or COPD, something along those lines that's creating significant bronchoconstriction. That's what you're looking for as far as an indication to do this. Just because someone has asthma, you always need to make sure you have this particular indication. Just because they have asthma doesn't mean you give subbutamol. You have to check for your indication as well, which is simply bronchoconstriction because that's exactly what subbutamol is going to correct. Uh, in contraindications, not many. The only thing that we're really concerned about is hypersensitivity. Uh, another relative one would be ischemic chest pain. Now, the reason being is that there's something called cardiac wheezes. It is more due to a cardiac pathology. And so what the concern there is, is that if you give salbutamol to someone that has chest pain, um, and say pulmonary edema as opposed to bronchoconstriction, you can actually induce more fluid to reach the alveoli. Um, that is something you'd be cautious with, absolutely. And so you're gonna be using salbutamol mostly in patients that have respiratory pathology, not cardiac pathology. Okay, a uh, dose for this particular medication. Now we're gonna use two different types. And so we have something, we have a, a MDI type and then we have our nebulized type. And so what we have here is in this first one is five milligrams in aerosol, which would be your, um, which would be your nebulized medication. The one that actually goes into the mask or the T-bar, uh, or you have a uh, meter dosed inhaler that can actually deliver up to uh, a lot of different micrograms that's what this UG is here and so we have 400 to 600 now each puff is going to be roughly a hundred micrograms and so this is saying four to six puffs uh, which means that we're getting four to six hundred micrograms for per dose per se so that's a per dose right there 
uh, through the meter dose inhaler and you can use this um, up to that amount and one puff every 30 seconds to spread them out so that way you're not making your patient you know short of breath trying to get these puffs in but an MDI is an effective medication a lot of these patients will have them with them as well which is nice so you don't have to worry about finding your own um, for this particular medication side effects uh, hypertension muscle cramps uh, dry throat uh, tachycardias and dry nose and headaches now remember that this is a sympathomimetic so the more that we use this we're the more that we're going to create a sympathic uh, response which means that we're going to see sympathic responses like alpha 1 uh, hypertension or vasoconstriction a tachycardia mainly affecting the beta 1 agonist as well so there's a lot of things here that are showing up when we start to use salbutamol or atrovent or sorry um, albuterol more and more and more and giving more and more doses we're going to start not just staying within that selective beta 2 we're going to start creeping into the beta 1 and the alpha 1 as well if you have any questions about salbutamol or albuterol please feel free to reach out and put it in the comments below we'd be happy to chat there don't forget to subscribe to us so that way you can check out our new pharmacology exam prep pathophysiology videos all that kind of stuff is on our page and we would love to see you back here to check those out bye for now